Democratic Senator from Pennsylvania, John Fetterman, unironically, as some conservatives are pointed out, had this to say about his colleagues in Congress while on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Let's watch. You all should need to know that America is not sending their best and brightest, you know, to Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes you literally just can't believe, like, you know, these people are making the decisions that are, you know, determining the, the government here. It's, it's, it's actually scary. I mean, so I may agree with John Fetterman, but, but why is he somehow the standard bearer of excellence, if you will, that Americans should look to to mimic in terms of the individuals they sit in the Congress? I certainly don't think he is. I don't think he said, you know, I am the, the shining bastion of hope in our democracy. Everyone who goes to Congress should be exactly like me. I think he <laughs> pretty clearly makes a valid criticism of a lot of our members of Congress who either intentionally or unintentionally don't understand how our economic system works the way that they've been doing budgeting for the past, uh, you know, decade and more. I think, you know, I can think back to being an undergrad when the government was shut down and Ted Cruz was reading Green Eggs and Ham to his kids on C-SPAN. And I remember having absolutely no hope uh, for living in this country and pursuing a career in public policy. But I think he, he makes an accurate criticism here because it's either one or the other. It's either we have members of Congress that are paid uh, by lobbyists, they have stock in corporations like you know Pelosi does and many other members of Congress do. They're paid to govern in a direction uh, that is not what the American people want or need. And then they espouse reasons for why they are doing things in that way instead of taking the obvious path public policy wise that would help people. And that makes them seem not so bright. I think being selfish makes you someone who's not so bright or they really don't understand how things work and they really believe we can't have nice things. And I don't know which is worse, but I know I agree with him that we are not sending our brightest, but it's a job that not a lot of people wanna do because guess what? You don't work in good company when you go to Congress so I can understand why our brightest don't wanna go. I mean, like, you know, I would love to see some plans uh, from Senator Fetterman that addresses some of the issues that he believes his non-bright colleagues aren't quite focusing on. I mean, I think it's one thing to be critical of, of a body being the House and the Senate or politics, generally speaking. It's a whole other thing to say, here are my criticisms, but here are also my solutions uh, to address those things. And I would love to see uh, some bills proposed in the Senate that come from uh, the senator. I would love to see uh, some of his critiques and rebukes and also suggestions on the various subcommittees and committees that he's a member of. I'd love to see those things. Again, it's easy for everybody to go on the Colbert Show to critique things or to be on social media to critique things. But let me see your solutions in addition to your critiques. Yeah, Fetterman in his first week uh, serving in the Senate introduced four bills, co-sponsored them. Uh, these bills were covering issues like receiving health care, the Better Care and Better Jobs Act, the Federal Adjustment of Income Rates, also known as the FAIR Act. He's someone who cares about policy. Unfortunately, we don't have a consensus of members of Congress in the Senate or the House who want to pursue good policy making. They don't want to govern on behalf of the American people simply because they're paid not to. Fetterman is someone uh, who has supported the plans to weed out corruption in Congress and ban members of Congress from trading stock and ensure that we have members of Congress that are not taking lobbying money. He's someone who ran on this. He supported Bernie Sanders because he he belongs to a faction of members of Congress who really want to get big money's influence out of our government in the United States of America. And I think that's why he got such a big working class coalition uh, that was considered to be conservative in Pennsylvania. Uh, that wasn't the typical kind of liberals that elected members of the squad before. He appealed to conservatives as well because these are common sense policies that bolster up the working class. So I think, you know, Fetterman's probably just a little upset that he's working with so many people that are unwilling to legislate to address the issues most everyday American people face, the people who elected him to represent uh, them in Congress. I mean, look, Jess, I'm going to take your word that he did offer those bills in his first couple of days or weeks uh, as a senator. Uh, I'm not necessarily opposed to that. I'm sure I'd probably disagree with some of the senator's solutions. 
uh, to the problems that he's critical of. And that's okay. That's, that's a part of the political process. That's a part of the legislative process. You try uh, somehow to meet in the middle to avoid the policy paradox. And so if Fetterman is uniquely concerned about those things, whether he's a Democrat or not, whether I disagree with the way he dresses, which I absolutely does, I'm willing to have those conversations with the Democratic senator to say, hey, let's try to figure some of these things out. And I would even uh, go as far as to say I would love to see the senator um, go to the floor in the Senate and give a speech on the importance of the American people sending the best people to represent them. I would support the senator going to the floor to say, look, demand that your political leaders actually have your interests at heart, not the interests of uh, special interest groups. I mean, those are things that I think uh, he would get applause from both sides of the political aisle in this country. You know, Fetterman has said these things in press conferences before, on the floor of Congress, clearly on the Colbert show, and in his regular press conferences. And I think when we consider the problem he's uh, addressing there on Colbert of why do we have members of Congress that are not so intelligent, I would point to a few problems in our democracy. We have people in the party machine who are propped up as candidates. Uh, they become a household name because of the advertising money that they get. Uh, and most people don't have the time or the energy to look into candidates beyond what they get in their ads on their local televisions in their newspapers and when they come and stump. We have a crisis in our democracy where people running in primaries for local and state elections, including you know electing members of Congress to represent them on the federal level, they don't have good information. We don't have a lot of competitive primaries. And I really think it's a crisis of a two-party system that's run by establishment, that establishments that are beholden to the corporate interests that give them money via PACs. And so I really think if we want our best and brightest to go to Washington, D.C., we need to bolster up our democracy. We need real competitive primaries. We need people to be primaried when they're an establishment candidate and they're not doing the job of representing the people in their district. I really think competitive primaries is a good step forward. Uh, and I think Fetterman pointing this out is a good first step. Someone on the inside is, is willing to criticize their colleagues in Congress. We need that as well, just as much as we need grassroots organizers pushing candidates up who are fighting and challenging establishment candidates so that we don't have a Congress that's stagnant and the oldest Congress in history and a Congress that's unwilling to address the issues everyday Americans face. They see their lives getting worse and they see the representatives not doing much about it. And I think a lot of them are not sure why. Yeah, I mean, Jess, I, I look to see where Fetterman addresses this on the floor of the Senate. I, I do see that he's made mention of it in various press conferences. I do see at least one or two occasions where he's mentioned it tacitly uh, in a Senate floor speech or in Senate remarks on the floor uh, in addition to other remarks. But I haven't seen him specifically address this overall, and I think he should. I mean, I think the next time there's a vote in the United States Senate, I would pause the whole process to say, wait a minute here. Has everyone ever actually read through this? Do we really know what we're voting for? Do we know the implications of this economic bill that we're getting ready to pass to add on trillions of dollars of debt uh, to future generations of Americans? And then maybe you take a vote. But I think doing something like that in the midst of such a pivotal moment would certainly get a lot of attention and get a lot of focus and, again, get support from people in his own state, including Republicans. I'm confused. So you're saying you've seen him give speeches on this on the, the floor of the Senate and in press conferences, but not overall? No, no. So what I'm saying is he's tacitly remarked on this issue at press conferences and on the floor. What I'm saying, he should go to the floor and give an overall speech on the decays of Congress. And he could do that as a member of the Senate. A speech hope, specifically uh, about this particular issue and not just mentioning it in addition to a whole bunch of other issues, which is what I've been able to find online. Yeah, I mean, the the he's supporting Ro Khanna's legislation. If what I'm not sure what issue specifically you're talking about. Corruption in Congress as a whole is something he talks about a lot. Uh, I'm not sure what issue you're specifically talking about. Ro Khanna is the one who introduced the bill uh, that the Progressive Caucus overwhelmingly supports, including Matt Gates, to ban members of Congress from trading stock, taking lobbying money, and having term limits. And he did give a pretty powerful speech on the floor of Congress. And I think that's why you have some of the populist uh, members of the right in Congress, in the Freedom Caucus, the Republicans, the House GOP, saying, you know what, we support Ro Khanna's policy because I think they're just as upset 
with the stagnation we see in Congress. And I'm not saying Matt Gates is one of our best and brightest, but if you have the wherewithal to support this basic policy that would weed out so much corruption we have in Congress, I think you're doing better than a lot of members of the GOP Congress, and frankly, a lot of members of the more establishment side of the Democratic caucus as well. And so I think this new brand of congressman that is willing to challenge the status quo is good, whether it's Fetterman or Matt Gates. even though I disagree with most of Matt Gates' policy platform, I really do think that it's good that we have candidates like Fetterman, you know, criticizing their fellow members of Congress that are representing a way of governing that has proven to fail. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I get your point of Rokana's speech on the House. I haven't seen that on the Senate side. Fetterman could be that individual to give a more in-depth, robust speech to you saying you don't know what I'm talking about. It's one thing to give a, a critique at a press conference. It's another thing to go into Stephen Colbert's show and say, oh, I'm critical of this. It's another thing to go to the floor and make a bunch of comments and then slide in. Oh, yeah, by the way, I don't like the way we're doing business, but continue on with your commentary. It's a whole other thing to literally go to the floor of the Senate with the sole purpose of addressing your critique and addressing your colleagues about their failures to the American people. And that is my point. If Fetterman really wants to raise this question, go to the floor and make a speech specifically about these issues and these issues only. Uh, more rising after this.